Hello and welcome back to the Geek on My Sleep channel. In this video, Peter and I will be giving you five of our top five reads in 2020. So the qualifications to make this list were we had to cover it on the channel in 2020, which means we had to read it and or reread it slash re-listen to it in 2020 so that came out to be what did we say 50 plus books this last year pete yeah we at least cleared our 52 book challenge yeah so i know i really relied on pete getting some of my favorite books to make sure they made it to this list but even considering that he's going to pick five books that i really enjoy it was hard for me to narrow this list down to five so here we go. Pete, in no particular order, what was one of your top five books of 2020? The Land Founding by Alaron Kong. And this is by far my number one top pick for lit RPGs. And it's just beautifully done. I enjoy the concept of the differing magic where he's already a high level player. And then he gets transported to another world, as well as it's just written beautifully with the comic relief and the seriousness and the progression. And yeah, num there's eight out in the series at the point of recording. Yeah. The landing, gosh, like top lit RPG is a really, really high mantle considering all the lit RPG books we've read in the last couple of years. Um, I don't know if I could, I don't even know which book would be my top lit RPG book, but it's always going to have a special place in my heart for helping to get me into the lit RPG genre that, like I said, we've just been having so much fun with. Um, my top book or one of my top fives first on the list was actually a reread for me. As I said on the channel before, I probably go back and reread this book once every six months. Dune by Frank Herbert, often considered the father of science fiction. It's just a phenomenal story. Uh, takes place um, in the future, post-apocalypse. Uh, we have incredible technology, but have pretty much like outlawed AIs. And it's just such an amazing journey following the Atreides family and exploring um, humanity and all the potential possibilities there. And there's just so many good quotes in this book that I often find myself going back and uh, repeating to myself and others. Right, Pete? So fear is the mind killer. And it kind of relates back to the whole, like, fight-or-flight reflex. Like, you know that there's fear, but it's what you do about it and not to let it control you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, what was number two for you uh, on top picks? Number two would be Ascend Online by Luke Chimilenko. Surprise, surprise, another lit RPG. And this one takes a different spin because it covers the... It, they're not technically stuck, but it goes into a futuristic nanobots version or where they utilize medical advancements and nanobots to put you into a full dive capsule. That way you can experience the game fully as well as your muscles aren't going to atrophy and the medical side is covered. And then it also does well where it incorporates the real world into, you know, them being able to essentially stream or do what they do. So it's very encouraging that way, as well as the MMO aspects or the game aspects are really exciting where it doesn't seem like it's too far in the future per se. And I would love to see some of these things implemented where the organic growth or the NPC development of 
how they can interact with it as well as the environmental impacts and the main character ends up having some I guess permanent character adaptations that are just so uniquely done that I haven't really seen in a lot of other lit RPGs. Yes. Yes. Right there with you, uh, Ascend Online, definitely one of my top books. And I, I like to fantasize about how close that reality is. And um, yeah, looking forward to those intense immersion virtual MMOs. Yes, please. Uh, number two on my list for top reads of 2020 is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, just cannot say enough positive things about this epic fantasy series. Really enjoyed doing the read-along one book a month leading up to the release of this this year. The geek outs were a lot of fun. And uh, Magic Knights with... Their their own sprints slash pixies slash Pokemon. I mean, like, what's what's not to love? Yeah, I really enjoy the Stormlight archives as well. And for those who don't know, Brandon Sanderson finished out the Wheel of Time series, and that was kind of like his first, you know, time that I knew of him. And then this is supposed to be his Wheel of Time. Uh, I can't remember how many books are supposed to be into it. If it's ten or if it's 15, but yeah, it's just amazingly done. Uh, Brandon Sanderson does really good bringing to light. I, I want to say mental disorders to where like people struggle and not saying, uh, yeah, where people struggle and we get to see them at their lows and we get to see them persevere and work their way through it. And it's just an amazing journey with Epic magic. Yeah, that that's, that's pretty accurate. Huge wheel of time fan. Yes. Yes. And he, Brandon Sanders sends a powerhouse, like constantly pushing out content and we'll actually hopefully finish the series in our lifetime. Like some authors. So, number three of your top five, what do you got? Something Full Murder Hobo by Dakota Kraut. Uh, we've covered a lot of Dakota Kraut stuff on the channel, but this is the first in the series. And Dakota Kraut, I love him because he does so many Easter eggs. And this is a nod to the multiverse and several other things. I think it would be a great standalone. It's, yet again, got a very unique organic uh skill advancement i think the biggest thing was when you get experience you can either put it towards your character level and then once you get a character level you can apply it to your raw stats or you can apply it to the ability so you can level up just that one ability to make it more potent and they've got several tiers where once the ability gets to a certain tier, it gets extra benefits. So that was very unique in the distribution of XP. Dakota Kraut is always great for the humor, humorous side of things. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't been paying attention to our channel, Dakota Kraut is probably one of our most covered authors. And he's another powerhouse that's constantly releasing new titles. And... He's just been a lot of fun and well known for his puns. So number three on my list was Heaven's River by Dennis E. Taylor. This is from the Boboverse series. Bob is a computer programmer who sold his company and bought um essentially like freezes his brain resurrection later um skip 100 plus years and he's actually been made into a von neumann probe to go out and colonize the galaxy and yeah 
gosh, like, yeah, I feel like we waited forever for this book, book four. Um, what do you think, Pete? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dennis E. Taylor with his Baba Verse series is a phenomenal book. Absolutely love the series. Uh, there's definitely a big time discrepancy between book three release and book four release, but I feel that he did it justice. Um, it does have a little bit of a different feel versus the other books, but I think it progressed very well. Do you, do you look at otters the same way anymore? Oh, what do they call them? The Quinlans. Quinlans, yes. And so in book four, you kind of get the Quinlans, which are humanoid otters, which is a very unique first contact situation. So that was a lot of fun. Number four of your top five of 2020. I'd have to say Life Reset Human Resource by Shamir Kuznick. And surprise, surprise, another lit RPG. This one is unique and does things differently because they already have the, you know, more or less dive capsules. You know, we do follow the player gets trapped in another world or in the game world. But it's the first time I've seen a player play from the monster perspective. Um, this one is pretty stats heavy, which I enjoy. Is very civilization, town building, progression heavy. But we do get a lot of combat, a lot of solo stuff as well. And I think we're up to about to release book six at the time of recording. But, oh man, I, uh, all hail the green overlords as well as the book takes a unique direction with the AI aspect. And yeah, it's just a great journey, very well written. And for Life Reset, this is one that normally I don't care if, you know, everybody has the way that they like to absorb their content. Uh, this is one that I would highly recommend or suggest over the physical copy is to do the audio version because Sound Booth Theater, uh, they've got a YouTube, you can watch them live, and it's just amazing to see them work through the process. Um, but yeah, they do a great job in the different voices, and they also have a couple of musical numbers in there, which, you know, you can't get in the paper copy yeah, so the, you know, kudos Sound Booth Theater. Go check them out. And yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, especially when they have little singing musical bits in there. Uh, so well done. Um, one of the many reasons why I enjoy Life Reset series is like we, we said, we've been having a lot of fun in the lit RPG realm. Yet this one does it all a little bit differently. Right, like there's plenty of those um, overpowered main characters, you know, with some awesome epic abilities. Uh, right, like it's been it's been overdone in the genre. For life reset, he's pretty much thrown into the lowest of the low and plays a monster race as a goblin. Right, like yeah, he does end up playing a goblin, and a lot of it comes down to knowledge is power. To where the organics of how you can learn spells and the unique system they have, it's called a prime badge, where if you are the first one to figure it out, you get increased stats where you can uh, level it up quicker. Well, I shouldn't say stats, but you get increased XP gain for it as well as you can teach it to other people if you hold the prime badge for it Which was very interesting and then a little bit more on the AI component it It is very unique that it takes Intent and it develops structures around them. So if you you know do something inside the game and it thinks oh this should be a skill it develops it around it and creates it so that was very exciting for you know possible future stuff i know we're doing a lot with ai as of currently you know self-driving cars so on and so forth 
It's okay. We'll we'll cut you off right there to make sure we don't slip up with any big spoilers. Uh, because it's so easy to want to just jump into a geek out session on these books. And there's a reason why they're on our top five list, right? For myself, uh, number four on my top five was Dungeon Lord. Abominable Creatures by Hugo Huesca. Uh, number three in the Dungeon Lord series. And yeah, this is pretty much a... Dun not necessarily a dungeon core, but like he becomes a dungeon lord, pretty much like the final boss of a dungeon and has to build it up. Right? And it's a lit RPG, but it definitely reads more like a traditional dark fantasy slash D and D campaign more than a hardcore lit RPG in my opinion. Do you feel that's accurate, Pete? Yeah, I feel it's very, it's more so D&D-esque with the, oh, I guess spell cap type deal where you can only use so many spells in a day um, where more, I guess, a lit RPG or video game lit, I think it's more cooldown or mana-based. So that was, yeah, why, why I got more of the D&D feel from it. As well as like dark fantasy, but it also it does well with it sets a theme in the very first book and it sticks to it. And yeah, it's just beautifully done to where he sticks to what he sets out and he fits inside all his rules and he creates a uh, yeah, just a, a beautiful thing around objectivity. Dungeon Lord, awesome series. Really looking forward to geeking out over the fourth one and getting current with this series on our geek outs. Uh, last but not least, Pete, what was the last book to make your list top five for 2020? So Rogue Dungeon by James A. Hunter and Eden Hudson. And yet again, surprise, surprise, it's another lit RPG. What's very unique about Rogue Dungeon is normally they'll take someone from Earth and then they'll get trapped inside an MMO or inside a game. But for this one, it takes someone from a fantasy world where they already have their own unique magic system. And then they end up having a portal spell go wrong and end up inside an MMO. I agree. It's uh, another series I'm definitely looking forward to getting current with. Um, I know you got a little bit further than I did, but I've only read the first one at this point. I want to say there's a total of four out now. Does that sound right? Maybe. At least three. At least three. So... Number five on my top five of 2020, A Mark of Kings by Bryce O'Connor and Luke Chimilenko. Uh, if you've been paying attention, Luke made the list twice for 2020. We found him initially in Ascend Online. While we were patiently waiting for book four of Ascend Online, he released a couple collaboration projects. Uh, this is the first of anything I've read of Bryce O'Connor, and it was a lot of fun. Um, been a minute since we read it, but like definitely a lot of the aspects of Luke's writing style uh, I, I I saw in this book, thoroughly enjoyed, and. There's a lot of the cliche tropes, but it, it was just a fun story, right? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's very, I guess, I think old school fantasy or kind of D&D-esque. Um, for the first one here, it's very much assembling our party and, you know, trying to save the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I think you did a good job summarizing it there without dropping any spoilers it feels a lot like the traditional old school 
fantasy stories that we grew up with before we found all these other cool epic genres. Um, the book is a lot of fun. We'll make sure to tag and pop up all the relevant, preferably spoiler-free reviews for this stuff. If you guys want to check it out, we listed a number of series that we still have ongoing. So make sure to keep an eye on our upcoming geek outs and in our discord links below to see where we are in our read alongs slash geek outs for all this good stuff. Did I miss anything, Pete? Nope. Hope to geek out with you here soon. Bye. Bye.